Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto possessed abilities of Rabbit Goddess and the Psychic Goddess? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. On the night of October 10th, a catastrophe had befallen Konohagakure. The people were unaware and unprepared that their village was under attack by the biju known as the Kiyubi, known also as the Nine-Tailed Fox. While many shinobi and kunoichi were putting their lives on the line to defend their homeland, try and keep the people safe, panic was spreading throughout the ranks as the absence of their leader, the Yandaimi Hokage. Meanwhile, in a chamber hidden away within the Hokage monument, Minato Namikaze was in the process of helping his wife with her delivery of their children. Minato was in a panic, hearing the sound of his village being destroyed and feeling the Kiyubi's violent attacks throughout the chamber was worrying the young cage nearly to death. Weeks ago, Minato had delved into figuring out a way to subdue or destroy the biju without endangering his wife and his unborn children. From past reports that he had studied and reviewed, a Jinchuriki was most vulnerable when giving birth, though, in the end Minato wasn't successful in finding a solution that he liked. Sealing the beast was the only solution that he had been able to come up with, though the price of sealing the beast was condemning himself and the beast to the Shinigami and his children to carrying such a terrible burden. However, fate had decided otherwise. You are lucky mortal. Contracting me using the Shiki Fujin requires that you forfeit your soul and by extension, your life once the sealing is completed. However, removing you from this plane when your family still requires you, you who gave life to the one chosen. For this, I will pardon the requirement of taking your soul, but I will take something dear to not only you but those who are precious to you as compensation. Do not forget this mortal, your foolishness would led you to your own despair, the Shinigami ominously said, sealing the soul, yin and yang chakra of the Kiyubi into three of his four children, Natsuko, Mito, and Menma respectively. After the sealing and confrontation with the Shinigami was over, the threat of the Kiyubi adverted, Konoha shifted its attention to treating those injured from the event and to rebuild what was lost. Scene change, Konoha Hospital, everyone had better not be slacking, if I even, think, that you're not giving it your all, I'll drive you through the wall. Roared a beautiful blonde woman with her hair tied in two tails, that woman being one of the Densetsu no Sanin, Tsunade Senju, as she stormed into the hospital after checking on the Uzumaki Namikaze family. Glancing around and noticing the lack of attention directed at her due to the crazy atmosphere, Tsunade decided to ask her right hand woman, assistant, and disciple, What's the situation looking like so far? Shizun! roared Tsunade, not seeing her anywhere. Tsunade sama! The injured have been reduced by half thanks to the field staff dealing with situations outside of the hospital that weren't severe enough to warrant admission. From the number of patients and medics, I'd estimate that we're almost finished treating the ones who have been admitted, and I haven't seen more than seven patients be admitted in the past hour. I think that most of the shinobi and villagers who were injured have been taken care of, replied a pretty yet exhausted woman with shoulder length raven hair, Shizun, Tsunade's assistant and disciple. Releasing a relieved sigh, Tsunade voiced her relief with the now stable situation at hand. Phew, that's good. I had imagined that there would have been many more injured than that, thank goodness the casualties were minor. That means that all the injured are accounted for, meaning that the village got out in extremely good shape when you compare it to other villages who were attacked by Biju. Also sharing a sigh of relief with her mentor, Shizun remembered the two who were in the middle of the attack. Tsunade-sama. You said that all the injured were accounted for right? What about Kashina-sama and Minato-sama? Shouted a worried Shizun having momentarily forgotten about her village's leader and his wife. Relax Shizun, they're safe, Minato had a rather severe case of chakra exhaustion but he'll be alright knowing him. Kashina, other than the typical signs of giving birth, is completely fine, even after having the Kiyubi forced out of her, she's still alive and is going to be fine. She'll be up and about in no more than 5 hours tops, I'll even make a bet that she will. Tsunade confidently replied so confident that she offered to make a bet with Shizun on it, which given her alias as the legendary sucker, was no small statement. The two shared a relieved and happy laugh as the danger that, no more than 48 hours before, had passed. 
That is, until Tsunade had assumed that Shizune was also laughing at her extremely bad luck and chased her around the hospital wing, her fist waving threateningly in the air while the other occupants and staff of the hospital laughed in good humor at the antics of the duo. Scene change. Uzumaki Namikaze Estate, Minato, are you sure that you're alright? You used the Shikifu Jin but you didn't lose your soul like what was supposed to happen. A tall man, with a spiky mane of white hair with red paint on his face worriedly asked his disciple. This man was Jiraiya, one of the Densetsu no Sanin and mentor to Minato. Sensei, I told you I'm fine. See, I can do everything without a problem. I need to go see Kushi Chan and my kids, so please stop worrying about me. Minato replied, creating his fabled Rasengan to emphasize his point to his mentor. With a sigh, Jiraiya relented, patting his student on the shoulder he congratulated him on his defeat of the Kiyubi and of the beginning of his family. I'm proud of you Minato. You've come so far even without my help. I couldn't have asked for a better student. Jiraiya said, pride evident in his voice as he walked with Minato towards the room created specifically for his children. Walking in quietly, they found what they were looking for. Kashina with her arms full with her, no their children. Wordlessly walking towards her and sitting down, he wrapped her and their children in a loving embrace. Their beautiful Kushi Chan. Minato said, resting his head on his wife's. Sinking into her husband's embrace, Kashina sniffled a bit before expressing her sincere thanks to whatever entity that allowed her family to stay together, though what seemed like impossible odds. Mina kun, we're together. We're all together. All of us. You didn't have your soul taken, and I survived having the Kiyubi force out. We're going to be able to watch our children grow up and they'll have a family to love and take care of them, Kashina said. But little did they know, that this incident will bring them into their disaster. For they have forgotten about one. In the private training ground of the Uzumaki Namikaze estate, five individuals were engaged with training. A boy with shaggy blonde hair with brilliant red tinted tips with deep cerulean blue eyes, standing at around four feet high, this was Menma Uzumaki Namikaze, third born of the Uzumaki Namikaze family, who was chasing around his father Minato, as the two were laughing loudly. The other two children consisted of two girls of the same height of four feet, giggling and chatting happily with their mother Kashina. Second born of the family was Mito Uzumaki Namikaze, who had her mother's brilliant red hair that went to the mid of her back tied into a ponytail and her father's cerulean blue eyes. The other was the youngest of the Uzumaki Namikaze family, Natsuko Uzumaki Namikaze, who had inherited her father's blonde hair that was tied in a twin tails fashion with bangs similar to her father framing her face and her mother's violet-colored eyes. The scene now was a picturesque moment of a happy family spending time together, which would have been true if not for the pair of dark blue hollow eyes watching his family partake in another activity without him. He was the oldest of the Uzumaki Namikaze children, he was Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, having a darker shade of blonde and darker colored eyes than his family. After heaving a sigh, he returned to his room to his own bed momentarily forgotten for the slim chance that he would be invited to play with his family because of the situation that he was in. After reaching his room, he sat back down on the bed and continued thinking about his life, he drifted off to the world that the book offered for him as he contemplated his interactions with his family over the years. It's not going to change it is. It's been this way for as long as I can remember, and I still don't know why they always leave me out when we do things. Ka Chan and Tu San didn't used to be like this. They used to include me in things when I was younger I just know it. Unknown to Naruto, and his family was the contract that the Shinigami made all those years ago with Minato. Instead of his soul he took the away the feelings of love and care that Minato, Kashina, and those who were close to the Uzumaki Namikaze had for Naruto and the great amount of chakra that he had. A twisted exchange that severed the bonds that he had with his parents and siblings and by extension, those associated with them. There are even times where he was neglected of shelter, he had to learn to make his own meals and shop for clothes on his own and even make a home out of wood, leaves and strings. They did severely neglect him when it came to love. He was forgotten and rejected in favor of his more vocal siblings, Menma in particular ensured his parents pay no attention to himself by being more assertive and vocal with his demands like when it came to where the family was to go eat and the like. This divide was not limited to Menma. Natsuko and Mito both stayed a distance away from their older brother like he was an outsider, even to the point that he had no existence, even though in the past they used to play together like normal siblings, 
however that ceased happening years ago as Natsuko began to act similar to Menma and Mito closed him off from any form of contact with her. From the situations that he's been in up to this point, he didn't think like it would be ending anytime soon. Letting his head fall onto his pillow, Naruto could only think about what his future would hold for his neglected life. He would rather be hated than completely ignored, but it seemed to the young boy that that was an impossibility. However, he would be starting his ninja training at the academy in the fall, so for now the future seemed brighter than it did in the past year. Flashback. Last year, Hey Tu San, when can I begin with you, Menma, Natsuko, and Mito? asked Naruto with a bit of hope. Minato looked at Naruto and said, I am very sorry Naruto, but I can't teach you anything if you don't have any chakra. But you could teach me how to fight and defend myself, said Naruto sounding almost desperate. Minato said with a little bit of a tough tone, Naruto I am training Menma, Mito, and Natsuko at the moment, maybe next time. Fine I will go ask Ka-chan since you're such a ing bastard, said Naruto running away from Minato who was surprised at what Naruto said to him. Naruto went to find Kashina to see if his very who he cares about, who could be able to teach him something. He found her at the front of the Namikaze residence and asked her if she can train him, but she said to Naruto that can't train him because he has no chakra to use. Naruto gave a look of despair of how his last hope of help didn't even given him support. He ran straight to his room crying on how his parents didn't support him, he wanted to do something that could help him. Flashback. End. Time skip three years later. Ka Chan, Tu San, can't we learn any cool jutsu yet? Menma complained as he was balancing a leaf on his forehead. Little success. His mind set on learning something cooler like his father's Rasengan, then something as boring, improving his chakra control. Memna Ni, you need to learn to focus more if you want to be a super cool ninja like Ka Chan and Tu San. Right, Tu San? Natsuko half lectured her brother and half asked her father as she was participating in the same exercise that her brother and sister. Sitting next to Natsuko was Mito, trying to concentrate on her own leaf through the ruckus that her younger siblings were causing if the tick marks that were starting to become visible were any indicator. Menma, Natsuko, could you two please quiet down, I'm having trouble concentrating since you two are being so loud, Mito finally said, releasing her, ne san aura, as Minato and Kashina called it. But undeterred by their sister's aura. The two started to argue as to who was better at balancing their leaf as her older sister sighed at the impatience of sibling. Laughing with his wife, Minato reassured the three that they would be learning something new soon, as soon as they gain a better grip on their chakra control. While Kashina listed off the reasons as to why they needed to polish up their chakra control or else they'd be just like her when she was a genin, a chakra powerhouse without any efficient way to use any of it, which seemed to have worked as the Mito started to work harder as her younger siblings quieted down and started to concentrate seriously with nervous expressions on their faces. Then Minato and Kashina had their thoughts drifted back to their family, namely to their oldest, who wasn't taking part in training with his sibling. Mixed emotions were swirling within the two as they recounted their past interactions or lack of interaction with him. Confusion and despair began to fill their hearts as the reason as to why they were so distant to their oldest son eluded them no matter how much they tried to remember. What happened? What, why can't I find a reason why I've been ignoring him and leaving him behind? Agitated and confused, Minato mulled over the reason of his neglectful behavior towards his son. I, I want to be close to Naruto, but for some reason I can't open my heart to him and I can't help but feel as though that would put Mito, Menma, and Natsuko in danger. Why? Why is that? While her husband was beginning to question if he was being paranoid or not, Kashina began to think of her oldest as well. I've failed as a mother to Naru Chan, haven't I? I, I just can't open my heart to him for some reason. Whenever I try to get back into his life, it feels like something dark and cold enters my heart and I end up chickening out. What happened? Kashina began to feel as if a curse was placed on her to never love her oldest son, which was closer to the truth than she knew though the truth wouldn't be known to her and her husband for a number of years. However, their thoughts were broken by a rather upset-looking Natsuko. Tusan. Ka-chan. Menma Ni is being mean and cheating. He said that his leaf was balanced and when I looked he blew mine off my hand. Then he said that he won because of that. Tearfully complained Natsuki holding her leaf in one hand while flailing her other arm in a comical fashion as Menma quickly defended himself. I did not. Natsuko is making things up again to San, Ka-chan, ask Mito Ne, 
She'll tell you that I didn't do any of that. Right Mito ne. I did balance my leaf and when I told Natsuko the wind just happened to blow right at that moment and it was while I was telling her so it looked like I blew her leaf off her hand which I didn't do. Menma said in his defense, looking tearfully at his older sister for her support in his claim. However, that was not to be this time around. Tu san, ka chan. Menma did it. You know how he gets when there's he's in a contest, he'll do anything to win. Natsuko was almost able to balance her leaf when Menma did that so he could win. Mito said, petting her sister on her head as Menma dropped his in defeat and embarrassment. Defeat because he knew he had lost the argument and embarrassment because he knew he would be getting a lecture from his father and mother. Sighing to themselves, Kashina and Minato looked at each other before bursting out into laughter at the antics of their children. Seeing their parents laughing, Mito, Menma, and Narumi couldn't help but start laughing and giggling along with them. Though they were laughing together at the moment, Minato and Kashina couldn't help but feel guilty that there was a member of their family that had been forgotten and neglected and even feel horrible about what they did Naruto last year. Unknown to the Uzumaki Namikaze family, is that they were being watched. They were being watched by a young girl with skin pale as ash. Her eyes the color of warm honeysuckle. Hair dark as night. Aben tresses the color of crow's wings. Clad in a red velvet dress. This girl was Alma Wade. The one who destroyed Armachum Technology Corporation. And. That's right. Alma destroyed Armachum. She won. But the ultimate price she took was the loss of all three of her children. At first, she angry, beyond angry. She wanted to kill all of Armachum again for taking her children away again. But she soon realized that there was nothing left to kill. So the only thing she could do was sleep. But as she kept sleeping, her dreams were plagued by a boy. That boy was the oldest child of the Uzumaki Namikaze family. Ever since that dream, he has been in her mind for so long. She felt as though they were the same, but he make her feel whole again. Had enough of waiting, she decided to set out and search. Once she finally found him, she saw that he was just a kid, so she decided to make herself a kid as well. As the days would go on, she felt the intense need to kill the Uzumaki Namikaze family. They just left Naruto to himself. Not receiving any sort of love. On one night while they were all sleeping, she decided to see into Naruto's mind to learn more about. Once she was finished looking through his mind, let's just no one would have stopped her from going on a killing spree. But once she felt his hatred for them, she had decided to wait for the right moment to be with him. Alma took the energy out of tree and grass to gather a good amount of strength. Alma teleported to back to watching Naruto. Time skip. Next day, over these past Naruto managed to take a Uzumaki Kenjutsu scroll that had a lot of keita and techniques and started practicing outside the forest of death. To Naruto, the forest of death was kinda like his home because it was a place for him that he could go to unwind his negative feelings and emotions he had about his family. While using a stick that was just about a small sword size her began his Kenjutsu training. Today, Naruto confronted his parents in hope that they would train him for what he was about to show them. Hey tu san Kasan, can I show you something cool? said Naruto with a bit of excitement. But all Minato and Kashina did was roll their eyes in boredom and said with a bored tone, Sure Naruto what do you have to show us? Naruto bringed out the stick he was using and started a Kenjutsu Keita. Minato and Kashina were confused at the moment until Kashina realized it was one of the Uzumaki Katas. Kashina asked Naruto in a terrifying tone, Naruto, where did you learn that Keita? Naruto was beginning to become scared and said, IIT took one o of the Uzumaki S scrolls from Tu San and Ka San room. At that moment, Minato realized what Naruto did and got angry along with Kashina. Slaps. Slap. Was all that was heard as Minato and Kashina slapped Naruto and said, You little shit, how dare you are take a scroll without our permission? Are you to hinder our children growth? yelled Minato. Go to your room, you will have no dinner today, yelled Kashina. Naruto looked Minato and Kashina and said to them with a voice filled with venom and hated, Why do you neglected so much? One day I will destroy you and pieces of shits you call your children because I hate you. When Naruto said that ran out the house. When that happened Minato and Kashina felt a hard prang in their chest when Naruto said that. Alma who was watching felt pure and unadulterated rage in her. But seeing as how Naruto was hurt emotionally, she focused all of her attention to him. Scene change. Inside one of the seal in the moon, 
In the seal was just a white domain, it's nothing more and nothing less than a white. Inside this seal was a woman, or rather a goddess, she has very delicate facial features. She had extremely long, sweeping white hair that could touch the ground. She had two brown horns which stuck out from her head. Her eyes were the same colors of the Hyugas, and she also had a third eye on the center of her forehead that's eyelids parted vertically. Right now, her third eye is closed. Her eyebrows were cut very short, a symbol of nobility, and she wore a dark shade of lipstick on her lips and a dark shade of nail polish on her long fingernails. She wore the transitional high collared heim kimono, which was adorned with intricate lines that are gold and purple and tomo running down the center and edges of the gown. She is also pale skinned. This woman is Kagaya Atsutuki, the mother of all chakra. And right, she felt an unimaginable sadness. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, the oldest child of them, a cursed family. But to her, he is the reincarnation of the only person in the world she loved. The only person who showed her kindness and love before she was sealed. And now, the one who she loved is in pain, while she is in a seal and can do nothing. She could remember the last words he said before she and the Juby were sealed in their own seals and left in the moon. I don't care how long it takes, I'll wait for you. She digged into her kimono and pulled out a Shinju fruit. The one fruit she has been saving, keeping in perfect condition, just to give it to Naruto to make him like her. But since she couldn't be with him, she made to sure it was safe. Ever since she since the day she was sealed, she watched over Naruto. She watched every day since the that he died, to the day he was reincarnated. When she found out he was reincarnated, she felt an extreme amount of happiness. But as she continued watch over his current life, she was disgusted on how his current family was ignoring. She wanted to get out and soothe him with unconditioned love. But all she could do is watch. Naruto Pav, when Naruto ran out of the Namikaze residence, he ran straight in the forest of death crying his eyes out. Why won't they just accept me already, sobbed Naruto. I wished I can strong, so strong that no one can stop me. Naruto said with a bit of hope. Naruto started walking through the evil forest. Naruto noticed how there were spiders of many different colors and sizes that watching him, stalking him like some prey they have found. Not even ten seconds later the spiders started to attack Naruto, but Naruto had feeling they would come at him. So he started running with the spider chasing him. Leaves falling, passing through bushes, branches hitting him like crazy, slipping time from time. Naruto kept running deeper into the forest until he tripped and broken his right ankle. He slipped over to a tree as his head hit a small and rusty box. Naruto started crying knowing that his ankle was broken and how he was going to die and that he can't do anything about it. Naruto covered his face with his hands as her continued to cry. I, I wish I wasn't alone anymore. Naruto said his last wish. But as Naruto said that, a chain of events happened. Scene change. Inside one of the seals in the moon. I, I wish I wasn't alone anymore. When Naruto had said his last wish, she felt something was wrong. She felt more lighter than she felt before. Her white domain started to have black cracks. That's when she realized that her seal was. She noticed that the Jubi's seal was not breaking, just hers. She didn't really care. All she cared about is that her freedom is assured and she would be with Naruto. Once the seal seemed broken enough, she used her chakra and broke out the seal. She was free, she was happy. She had to save the one she loves, and with sparring a single second, she teleported to save her Naruto. Behind the spiders were Alma Wade. When she heard Naruto's last wish, she felt an unconscious to keep him safe from anything, to give him the love he lost. This was the first time she felt this way. It was a good feeling, and she wanted to keep this feeling. As soon as the spiders got near him they stopped as they looked up. They saw the rabid goddess, and she was not happy. Everything in their instincts told them to run. They quickly turned around to see a very angry Alma who was releasing a large amount of murderous intent. Both Kagaya and Alma looked at each other for a couple of seconds, then nodded. Alma raised all the spiders in the air while Kagaya blasted them to oblivion. Naruto moved his hands from his face. He looks around, wondering where spiders that have disappeared to. As he kept looking around he saw Alma, who was looking dead at him. Naruto backs away, unconsciously taking the box that his head touched. But suddenly he felt an intense presence. Slowly turning his head, to see Kagaya Otsutsuki who was looking directly at him. Her was intense beyond measure, he gaze was piercing to point where she could see into your soul. 
and she was hovering over to fall in form of Naruto. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Naruto kept repeating as he covered his head with his arms. Kagaya and Alma looked at each other, having a mental conversation why they were here, as a couple of minutes has passed, they nodded and came to an agreement. Naruto could only sit there in fear as he waited for his last moments of life to come to an end. As he just sat there, he felt two bodies pressed against him. He fearfully looked up to see Kagaya and Alma were hugging hugging him. It's all right, we won't hurt you, Kagaya said in a tone that calmed his heart. We're her for you, Alma explained as she rubbed his cheek. D did I do something wrong? Naruto questioned. We're just like you, we were alone. Kagaya started. We have someone or something to hate, Alma continued. Just like you, we didn't want to be alone anymore, Kagaya. Naruto thought about the words they said. They were just like, alone. They have something they hate. Hate. Naruto look of fear turned into a hateful scowl. He hated the Uzumaki Namikaze family. He hated the fact he has that name. He hated that people like them. He hated that Konoha likes them. He hates Konoha with every fibers of his existence. He clutched the box with a tight hold, causing it to break open. The sound of the box breaking surprised the three of them. What was inside the now destroyed box was a fruit. It was shaped to look like a very large apple, but it had every color in existence. What's this? Naruto stood. He noticed that he stepped on a piece of paper. He crouches down and picked up the paper. There was something written on it. It say. To anyone who finds this box, do not let anyone get their hands on this fruit. You have to seal it away. The fruit you see before you is the Sakai Sakai no Mi. World World Fruit. Anyone who eats this fruit will have all the powers, memories and past experiences from those who have eaten an Akuma no Mi. Naruto eyes widen at what he just read. If he eats this fruit, he will the power that no one can stop. He was be Kami among human. Kami among human. Kami. He would be Kami if he eats this fruit. Naruto rips up the paper and thrown it in another direction. Naruto quickly runs over and grabs the fruit. He looks at it with excitement. As Naruto was holding the fruit, Kagaya reformed the paper Naruto just torn up and started reading with Alma. Once they finished reading the paper, they looked at Naruto who was looking at the fruit. They knew that this may be their chance to someone great. Naruto finally took the first bite out of the fruit. He felt the extreme need to throw up to how disgusting it, but held it back as he didn't want to waste it. Once her finished eating the fruit, Naruto clutched his head and screamed in agony. So many things were going through head. So many memories, so many battles, so many fights, so many people, so much. Power. Naruto looked in the sky, he stopped clutching his head, stood up to his feet. Are you okay? Kagaya questioned her lover. Do you need help? Alma asked. Zihahahahaha, I feel amazing, he wasn't lying. Naruto could feel his baby fat disappearing. Now I know who I am. I am. Kami. Naruto ran over and gave those two a tight hug as he stretched his arms like rubber. Thank you so much, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you too. Naruto said honestly. Kagaya and Alma could help but blush at his honestly. By the way, what's your names? Naruto asked as he tilted his head. They had completely forgot about to introduce themselves. Alma decided to go first. My name is Alma Wade. Naruto nods and looks at Kagaya. You may know me as the Kagaya Atsushiki. Naruto's eyes widen. He was talking to the mother of all one who started it all. Surprising, isn't it? Naruto can only. Let us go home. I don't want to go back to those lesser beings who call themselves a family. That place is not my home, Naruto exclaimed. Don't worry. Leave everything to us. For the moment, let's leave this forest. Once we're at the entrance, you can wait there until we come back. Okay. Naruto nodded as he disappeared in a flash of light. While Alma and Kagaya teleported. Scene change. Entrance of the Forest of Death. Just as they reached the entrance, Naruto did as they told him and wait. As he kept waiting, he decided to mess around with his powers. Naruto crossed his finger, make a barrier surround him, he made a shadow do some tricks. He looks at his hand to see that it had a paw pad. He reminded himself to buy gloves. He turned body into electricity and shot some lighting bolts at some birds. Just as he was about to shoot another one, Kagaya and Alma teleported in front of him. 
So is everything okay? Of course. Everything went smoothly. So where are we go? Naruto was interrupted as Kagaya grabbed his arm and teleported along with Alma. Scene change. Hotel room. At least warn me before you do something like da. He could finish his sentence as he examined the inside of this apartment with his jaw dropped and eyes widened. To Naruto. This wasn't an apartment. This is a five-star class penthouse. How did you two get this in a short amount of time? It was easy. Kagaya said nonchalantly. What about rent? Don't worry about it. Alma said casually. Well then, it's a place fit for us gods. Naruto said with a smile, and they couldn't agree more. Naruto walked over to the door. There's one last thing I need, then I'm all set. Naruto pulled out a piece of paper from his pocket and disappeared in a flash of lightning. Scene change. Hokage's tower. Front entrance. One last thing, and I'm free from those lesser being. Naruto walks in the tower. As he walks in, he noticed many people were working hard with lots of effort. He couldn't help but shrug his shoulders. As her finally got closed to the Hokage's doors, Naruto was greeted. Hello Naruto-kun. What are you doing here? Naruto pulls out the paper and shows her. He's not going to sign it Naruto. The Hokage would never do that. Zihahahaha. Let's see if you're right or wrong. Naruto walked in to see a sight he hated. It was Minato Uzumaki Namikaze. One of the lesser being her will dispose of. Hey, can you sign this for me? Naruto asked, not really caring if Minato was looking at him or not. Sure. Just give me the paper. Naruto handed him the paper and Minato signed it, even stamped it with the Hokage seal. Here. Naruto took back the paper and left. As Naruto left the room, Minato looked in wonder at who was just talking to him, but he shrugged his shoulder and went back to work as he thought it wasn't important. Here you go. Naruto gave the paper to the secretary who gave a wide eye look, but it turned into a look of sadness as nodded and put the paper away. You do know that you will be kicked out of your clan, right? Yeah, yeah. Just get on with it. You're wasting the time of Kami. Naruto snapped his fingers to let her know he wants this done quickly. Very well. What will be your new last name? My new last name will be. Pariah. I shall be known as Naruto Pariah. Naruto said with a smile. Scene. Naruto's penthouse, uh. Man, yesterday was crazy. Naruto groaned as he sat up on his bed, wearing a white tank top and black boxers. Naruto looked and noticed something, Kagaya and Alma weren't with there. He started to look around with a bit of worry in his heart. But that worry soon disappeared as he found a note on the table. It says, Dear Naruto, me and Alma are currently traveling the elemental nations. The reason why is that Alma wanted to know more about this land, and it could be useful or helpful to her. Don't worry, we'll be back soon. And if you're hungry, I left you a fruit in the refrigerator. It really good and it might be helpful for you. Naruto gave a huge sigh of relief. The thought of him being alone is something that he could not even bear to handle. Before he could put the letter down, he saw that there was more written on the note. P.S. Alma says get ready. Get ready for what? P.S.S. Get ready. Naruto thought the same thing again as he wonders what was going to happen, but he shook his head as he put the note down. Feeling his stomach grumbling, Naruto decided that he would eat the fruit now. So he goes over to the fridge and opens it to find the fruit that Kagaya was talking about. It certainly looked exotic to Naruto and it was bigger than a full-grown watermelon. He slowly picked up the fruit and examines. It didn't have a smell to it, so he couldn't tell whether it was good or bad. Deciding to bite the bullet, Naruto took a bit out of it. Surprisingly, it was the very good. It was the best thing thing he had in years. But little did he know, the fruit he was eating is the, the Shinju fruit. Once Naruto finished eating it, he felt something tingling going through his body. He felt hot, extremely hot, almost as if he was set on fire. Suddenly, he started to clutch his head in agony. His spiky dark blonde hair became longer, long enough to go past his shoulders. The bottom half of his hair became pure white. His eyes turned into purple. Then it started to shift between the Hyugas by Kugan. In the middle of his forehead, he had a third eye that was just like Kaguya's. Once the hot feeling was gone, he ran to the bathroom to see what happened to him. Once he saw his changes, he could not help but be amazed by his new looks. He looked better than his previous look. He felt as though he was being to look like Kami, for he is Kami. Zihahahaha. 
Thank you so much Kagaya-chan. He thanked Kagaya even though she wasn't home yet. We're home. Speak of the devil. Welcome back, Naruto returned the greeting as he left the bathroom. Noticing the changes, Kagaya and Alma were holding themselves back, trying not to jump on the Naruto. Did you learning anything new? Naruto asked with generous curiosity. Alma held out hand. Naruto blinked in confusion, but he realized that she would show him if he grabbed her hand. Once he grabbed her hand, he saw. Visions. The visions were about Alma. How she was experimented by Armacham Technology Corporation. How she was used because her psychic abilities. How her first two children were taken away from her. How she was left behind to rot in that abandoned building. How people tried to take her out. How she got pregnant with a new child. How Armacham Technology Corporation tried to kill her and take her third. Lastly, how she Armacham Technology Corporation, but with the price of all her children. Once Naruto left go her hand, he looked at her face to see that she was crying tears of blood. As he couldn't handle the sight, he pulled her into a deep huge, soothing her as she cried silently in his chest. Don't worry, I won't abandon you. You to Kagaya. I won't abandon you to even if my life depended on it. That's a promise. And he wasn't going back on his promise. Now you're just like us. Now you're just like us. Kagaya and Alma said as Naruto broke off the hug. What do you mean by that? Naruto said as he had his hand up, causing a dimensional rift open right above his hand. His eyes widened at what he just did. He looked into the rift as he saw it acted as a mirror. He noticed that his right eyes was a warm honeysuckle, just like Alma's. Now, one third of his hair was a dark blonde, another third was now pitch black, the last third was still pure white. Whoa! This is definitely new, Naruto said as the dimensional rift closed. You ate the fruit, right? Kagaya asked, which Naruto nodded in response. Then you're just like me. Kagaya shortly explained, which made Naruto's eyes widen. When you gasped my hand and saw my past, I made you like me. Naruto's eyes widened again. The thought of him being like them made him extremely happy. It was now proof, undeniable proof, that he was Kami. Anyone that was below him would not stop him now. Naruto could laugh right now, but he noticed that it's now time for the academy to start. As much as I want to stay around and celebrate this new revelation, I have to get to the academy and show them the might of Kami. Naruto said as he went to a drawer and put on a pair of black gloves. So is there anything you want to? Naruto voice droned as he noticed Kagaya was putting red lipstick and Alma was putting on black lipstick. We told you to get ready, didn't we? Kagaya said in a matter of fact tone. You know what? I think I'm good with just my tank top, boxers, and gloves, so I'm leaving early. Naruto said as he quickly walked to the open door, but was soon stopped by the tight grip of Alma. You're not getting away that easy, Alma said sweetly, a little too sweetly. Get ready Naruto, because we're not holding back. Shit. Naruto cursed as he was pulled back, with the now open door closing slowly, with a creeping creak. Scene change. Academy, Konoha's Academy, a place for children to prepare for a career of being a shinobi or kunoichi to protect and serve their village. In the classroom being headed by Chunin Uruka Amino and Mizuki were the next generation of potential ninja that would be united under the Wolf Fire. In this particular class held the most notable students in the academy. Sitting in the front row was Menma Uzumaki Namikaze with his best friend Kiba Inazuka, son of the Inazuka clan head. Beside them were Menma's sisters, Mito and Natsuko Uzumaki Namikaze with their best friends Yakumo Kurama and Hinata Hayuga. Next to them were the Uchiha twins Sasuke and Satsuki, their usual scowls present. Behind them in the second row, were best friends Shikamaru Nara and Choji Akamichi, sons of the Nara and Akamichi clan heads respectively. Next to them sat Ino Yamanaka, daughter of the Yamanaka clan and Sakura Haruno, the daughter of a renowned civilian family, best friends and rivals in love, for the affection of two most popular boys in the class. Finally in the last row of the room sat the quietest individuals of the class, Shino Aburame, son of the Aburame clan head. An aisle next to Shino sat Sai, a quiet and artistic individual with no known family. As Uruka and Mizuki called rolled, they reached to their last student, and lastly, Uruka looked at the name carefully. This didn't seem right to him. The Hokage did say that this student is his oldest soon. 
but the last name is completely different. Naruto. Pariah? Every student including Mizuki was looking at him with confusion. The student's last name is Pariah. While the Uzumaki Namikaze siblings were wondering why did Naruto change his last name. He wasn't kicked out of the clan. There no way that their two San and Ka San would do that, right? Naruto Pariah. Is Naruto Parai? Uruka was interrupted by a door slammed. He quickly looked over to see Naruto with his back against the door, panting. His tank top and boxers were all winkle and looks if hands were grabbing it, trying to pull his clothes off. There are claw marks that travels down his arm and claw marks goes across his tank top. And his hair is a mess and what looks like red and black lipstick is all over his face. Are you okay? Mizuki asked with a little bit of worry. Yeah pant I'm fine. Did you call my name? Naruto asked. You're Naruto Pariah, correct? This time, Uruka asked. Naruto nodded. Why are you wearing just that? Because I can. I'm not going back either. Okay I get it. Is there anything else you want to say? Of course. A confident smile formed on Naruto's face. I am Kami. I am unmatched by all. Naruto proudly admitted. There was silence. No said anything, which made Naruto believe that everyone was in awe. But that soon left after almost everyone in the just started to laugh at him. Having to be annoyed by the laughter, Naruto release a godly aura and a white and black chakra that cause all the student, teachers, and nearby Anbu to choke, as well as shaking up Konoha for people to believe it's an earthquake. The earthquake and godly aura quickly stopped. Who told any of you to laugh? I am Kami. Those who dare laugh at Kami will face dire consequences. Naruto said in a bone chilling voice that meant business. You lesser being are truly boring. Naruto went up to the very back of the seat as he looked out the window. Naruto put his head down as soon he saw Alma looking at him from the roof, putting her black lipstick again. Unknown to most of in the academy, except Naruto, the Hokage, Jonin's, and clan's heads were looking in the Hokage's crystal ball, after the earthquake has ending. So they have no idea how or where that chakra came from. With that, the hours went on. As the many students were actually listening to Uruka, and unconsciously sliding away from Naruto, as they didn't want to piss him off, the only one who was brave enough to slide near him was Natsuko. But that soon stopped as Naruto gave a look of curiosity, but the look actually said is, don't you even dare, which caused her to stop. As the day was halfway, the class had a lunch break. Naruto made it known to everyone to not come next to him, even though his was hungry. He could probably take some food at light speed. But that idea was gone as the door opened. Everyone looked at the door and couldn't believe their eyes. The guys, even Shino and Sasuke, surprisingly, were blushing, and having a nosebleed. The girls were jealous at how someone could be that beautiful. She had long white hair that reached her hips, he eyes were a piercing amethyst that could looking into your soul. Her beautiful face had extremely gentle features, she wore an all white kimono. Creamy white skin that many women dream of having. She had a bust size that could make Tsunade jealous. You could by looking at her, she has an amazing body figure. This woman was Kagaya Otsutsuki in her human for with the help of a highly advanced genjutsu. She was looking around the classroom with a boxed lunch in her hand. That's when her sight landed on Naruto. There you are, Naruto. This caused everyone to look at Naruto with disbelief. They wondered how could this guy get a woman like that. What are you doing here? Naruto asked in wonders. You forgot your lunch at home. She handed him his lunch, but I mainly wanted to see you. The is so cold without you. I just wish this could end quickly. She noticed that all the lipstick was gone. You're not supposed to remove the lipstick, Naruto. She leaned over and kissed Naruto on the cheek. The jealous from the guy and rage from the girls was so strong, you could taste it. I'll pick you up after the academy ends. Kagaya walked off as Naruto kept staring at her retreating figure. Suddenly, Naruto was grabbed by the collar of Tank Top. He quickly sees Kiba grabbing Tank Top with tears in his eyes. What the hell? How could someone like you get a woman like that? Please tell me she, s your mom. Naruto need Kiba in the stomach. 1. She's not my mom. 2. Don't ever touch Kami. 3. Are you jealous or something? Are you mad because I got a woman like that? If you are, you're kinda pitiful. Naruto walked off without a care in the world. There was one thing that went through everyone's mind. 
WHO is this guy and how is he so lucky? Short time skip. End of the academy. Finally, it's freaking over and done. Naruto said as he stretched his limbs. Seeing as there was nothing left to do, Naruto decided to stand around and wait. He couldn't feel Alma's presence, so he guessed that she was with Kagaya. As he kept waiting, do nothing, he felt five presences coming near him. Is there a reason why you lesser being are trying to get the graces presences of Kami? Naruto questioned the Uzumaki Namikaze family. Minato had noticed that his oldest child was not at home anymore. Deciding that it might help mend the relationship that they had, he stopped his son. Over the course, Minato finally had begun to notice that he didn't feel the unease that he used to feel when he saw Naruto. Before, he felt the same way he did about a stranger interacting with his family, but that slowly started to change. At first he was suspicious but as time went on, the feeling of unease completely disappeared and it was replaced with a longing to reconnect with his son. However, his plan to reconnect Naruto with the family failed miserably as they finally noticed that Naruto was not in the house. I wanted to ask why did you leave the house without telling us? Do you know how much me and Kashina worried about you? Kashina like Minato, lost the apprehension that she used to have when she finally noticed that Naruto was gone. She tried her best to find him and try to reconnect her son. The reason why I left is because the presence of you lesser being makes me want to throw up my own intestines. Naruto gave an honest answer which shocked the Uzumaki Namikaze family and made Menma sneer at him. But before they could ask him what they mean by that, they were interrupted by someone else. There you are. They turned around to see Kagaya with a gentle smile on her face with Alma who was glaring at the Uzumaki Namikaze family. What's taking you so long, you know I hate waiting. Alma held out her hand, implying for Naruto to come to her. Naruto nodded and walked past them, ignoring the presences altogether. You're that woman that gave Naru Ni that boxed lunch and a kiss on the cheek, Natsuko exclaimed which caught the attention of Kashina. Natsuko? What do you mean by that? Who is this lady? Kashina asked in a low and dangerous voice. And who are you to be demanding such questions? Kagaya asked in a calm and cruel tone. I'm Naruto's mother, Kashina's yelled in fury, so you're Kashina Uzumaki Namikaze. Naru-chan's, real, mother. What do you mean by that? Naru-chan is my son, and mine alone. Naru Chan is coming back home with me. Naru Chan's real mother. Naru Chan will not return, out of deep resolve has he decided to come to me. Naru Chan has chosen me over you, Kagaya said in an empty tone that held a possessive nature. Three was a stunning silence at what she just said. You, Kashina angry grew as her hair came to life, her eyes turned pure white. Sensing the ultimate danger, Minato decided to interfere. Calm down Kashina. Let me fix this. He looks Naruto. Naruto, I want you to say goodbye to these two. You're a part of our family and clan. Naruto looked at Minato like he was an idiot. No I'm not. You kicked me out, remember? Naruto explained. This shocked the family. No I didn't Naruto. You don't need to lie. Yes you did. Yesterday you heard a kid's voice, asking you sign something. That kid was me. I gave you a paper saying that you pretty kicked me out of the clan. You even signed it with your name and used the Hokage's stamp. Naruto explained. Soon, he started to dig into his pocket and pulled out a folded paper. He quickly unfolds it shown it to Minato. See, here's the proof. The family looked at the paper. It showed Minato's signature and the stamp that was exclusive only to the Hokage. Now that we got that covered, I'm leaving. Goodbye lesser beings. Naruto walked off with Alma and Kagaya attached to his arms, leaving behind a crying Kashina and Natsuko. Mito feeling sorry for not support her oldest brother in his time of need. Menma glaring at Naruto. Minato trying to soothe his crying wife and daughter. Scene change. Penthouse. Once Naruto, Alma, and Kagaya was out of sight, they teleported back to the penthouse. I swear, those lesser being would never learn do they. The will of me. Kami, is unshakable by things like that. Naruto scoffed. It's okay. They will know anguish and despair once we're done them. Naruto nodded in agree. I almost forgot, there's something I wanted to give you. Alma made a solid golden ball that was the size of a baseball appear in her hand. It may not be much since this is the first time I've given a gift. 
Naruto took the ball. It's actually the greatest gift you gave me. I haven't gotten a gift in so many many years. But, why a golden ball? I thought you could use it for a better use than I could. Naruto looked at the ball for a second. Gloam paddling, electricity formed around the ball, causing it to disperse into lightning. Then it started to forging into something. Once the electricity died down, it formed into a staff. An. The same as Anil's staff. Thanks Alma. Naruto thanked her as he gave her a big hug. She returned the hug, and slowly whispered in his ear. You're caught. Naruto's eyes widen as he remembers what happened morning. Kagaya hugged him from behind. There's no use running. Shit. Naruto cursed under his breath as he was taken into their room. Time skip. Two years and scene change. Hokage's office. Inside the office of the Hokage, two figures could be seen discussing a topic that was on the minds of everyone who were associated with the newly graduated genin, that topic being the teams that they would be placed on. Heading the meeting was of course, Minato, being the Hokage he had the final word as to who was on what team with which instructor. Given a record of each individual genin, listing their strengths, weaknesses, special attributes, and other notable traits. The second was the final of the Densetsu no Sanin, Orochimaru. Orochimaru was once considered a traitor, having been arrested after suspicion about what went on in the lab that he operated. Having no doubts about his innocence, he willingly let the Anbu squad led by Minato and Jiraiya search his lab. However, what he didn't expect was to be attacked by his best friend and Minato then have suppression seals put on him. At first he was outraged, demanding why he was being arrested, but soon that anger turned into shock as he was saw what was inside of his lab. His lab, normally spotless and sterile, was covered in blood and gore. At first, he thought it was a genjutsu that someone had placed on him but after futilely trying to release it, he knew that it wasn't an illusion, after he was taken to Ibiki Morino for interrogation. Though, after he asked that they have Inochi Yamanaka to prove his innocence by reviewing the past few hours of his life they apologized and released the seals on him. During the interrogation, they had found that it his second apprentice Kabuto who had framed him. Kabuto had been stealing information and resources from his lab for his personal use. Though, they were unable to find Kabuto even with multiple squads of Enbu dispatched throughout the village. But that soon changed once Naruto came into his office with Kabuto, with ice sword pierced through his legs and half of his face melted off. He kept repeated, please kill me, in a fearful tone. Minato asked how did Naruto find him. He just replied with, I am Kami, none can escape from my sight. In reality, Naruto used his observation hockey to find him as soon as Kabuto left the village. After the incident, Minato and Jiraiya apologized for their mistake, Jiraiya espically. However, he brushed them off saying that they were only doing their duty and that he would have done the same. Originally he was bitter and angry that his sensei and the Sandame Hokage, Hiruzen Serutobi, had chosen Minato as the Yandaimi. But after Hiruzen talked to him about his reason, he grudgingly accepted. But slowly, he grew to like the boy thanks in part to Jiraiya forcing him out of his lab to meet with him for a drink from time to time. Now, he was the head of the torture and interrogation force and main consultant when it came to building teams as he oversaw all outgoing genin from the academy and had some insight as to what went on inside of their minds due to his position. Minato, Jiraiya and Orochimaru thanked Naruto which he replied by saying, I'm not as useless as you are. Whoever calls you the best must have stupid to not realize my greatness. Naruto disappears in a flash of light, which shocked the three of them. That being said Minato, what do you think of those for the potential team builds? Orochimaru asked, showing Minato a diagram with multiple different team compositions, ranging from tracking, assault, and support. After pointing out the candidates that would only be able to fill one role due to their skill set, he brought out a chart showing the candidates that could fill multiple roles in a squad. So far the teams look great, thank you Orochimaru. Minato expressed his sincere thanks, as squad building in the past was a difficult process of basically putting Genin together and seeing if they would work or not. But with Orochimaru, squads that have been assembled with his insight have had a 94.7% rate of successful squad dynamics. But I am concerned about one thing. Orochimaru was a little surprised as usually Minato almost never any qualms over the suggestions that he made, though he had a sneaking suspicion as to what it was about. What's your concern Minato? It's over your children isn't it? 
his suspicions were validated when Minato rubbed the back of his head in embarrassment. Minato voiced his confusion as to why his oldest wasn't included on the possible squad list. Yeah, you hit it right on the mark Orochimaru. I wanted to know I didn't see Naruto's name on any of the squad suggestions that you showed me. After hearing his question, Orochimaru sighed. Minato, you and I both know that your oldest son was treated like he never existed by both his family and the village, myself included. Though we both know that, because of that he started to proclaim himself to Akami. Orochimaru stated, seeing how Minato was about to retort. Do you know how he performed in the academy Minato? After hearing the question, Minato frowned and nodded his head. I do Orochimaru, from what I hear from practically everyone, he's the best out of every student in the academy. Even more so than the students who are serious on becoming ninja. His performance on the written and physical exams bring nothing but perfection, it's actually a miracle that he has not become a ninja so early, Minato said, his voice thick with guilt and shame as he was not there to help him. That being said, have you ever seen his actual scores and performance on the written and physical exams? Seeing Minato shake his head in the negative, Orochimaru took out Naruto's file and handed it to Minato. After taking it and opening, he didn't see what Orochimaru was trying to hint at. Though he did wince when he saw how poorly his son did. Seeing that Minato didn't get it, Orochimaru could only sigh. You don't see it do you Minato, isn't it suspicious that his grades are always perfect? How on every single exam, physical and written, he has managed to score 100s, even though he said that has never studied. That alone warrants suspicion, it's as if he is deliberately placing himself at all-time high in order to conceal his strengths or people to believe that as his limits are at mine. Now that I'm thinking about it more clearly, I'm sure that he's intentionally hiding his skills. Though for what reason, I'm not sure of, Orochimaru said, his brows furrowed in thought. Minato just couldn't wrap his mind around why his oldest would intentionally make people believe that he is as skilled as Orochimaru was making him out to be. But why would make people believe that his skills are finally at a limit? If he has the skill, why doesn't he show them to everyone? It sounds as if you're making him out to be a prodigy, if he was, he'd be something even more dangerous, more dangerous than a monster. Is that what you're saying? My son is a monster in human disguise. That's why I didn't place him with any of squads that I made Minato. I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but my personal assessment of him is that he's a potential flight risk. He trusts no one in the village except that woman and little girl and because of that has no loyalty or love for anyone else or Konoha either. As soon as Orochimaru finished his assessment, he was met with an angry and accusatory glare from Minato. What are you implying Orochimaru? Are you saying that my son is a potential threat to his squad mates and sensei? and a threat to the village? Minato wasn't happy that Orochimaru thought of his son as a threat to the safety of his ninja and village. He knew that his son wasn't treated the best, but he wouldn't turn on the village, would he? He would. Seeing that Minato was feeling conflicted on this matter, Orochimaru relented. Minato, I'll assign Naruto to a squad on the condition that my apprentice be his sensei. Not only because I trust her and you trust me, but she's one of the only people in the village that would be able to assess his mental state from observation alone. The only others being myself, Jiraiya, Tsunade, Ibiki, and Shizun. But I don't think that they should be removed from their posts for one genin, even if that genin is possibly unstable and your son. Minato thought about the situation deeply, on one hand he wanted to trust his instincts that his son wasn't a threat but considering that Orochimaru said about him trusting no one was undoubtedly true, eventually, he had to place his village over his son as much as it pained him to do so. All right Orochimaru, let's go with your plan. I'll trust that Anko won't be too. Anko, right? Seeing Orochimaru's wry smile in return, he could only hope that his son doesn't get pushed to the edge by his sensei. Well now that we have that settled, let's rebuild the squads then. Starting with the ones who have the most flexibility in regards to possible positions as he brought out a rooster and proceeded to highlight and circle prime individuals. He could only hope that this could end well, and boy was he so wrong. It was finally time. After two years of boring academy days, today was the day that teams would be picked out of those who passed. Just before she walked into the classroom, he looked at the list of students who passed. As his eyes traveled at the names, there was one name that he could not ignore. That name was Naruto Pariah. After the first week passed in Konoha, he was excelling at an unnatural rate. When it came to ninjutsu, genjutsu, 
and taijutsu, it was like he was kami. He would perform B to a rank ninjutsu without any hand signs at all. He would perform genjutsus that not even Kuranai could break. It was even known that he broke the sunset genjutsu that Might Guy and Rock Lee make when they always man hug. The fact that he broke that genjutsu even made Kuranai begging to teach her on genjutsu. Naruto replied with a no. But taijutsu was a whole different matter. His taijutsu was something that could say, out of this world. Naruto taijutsu was something he created himself. He called it the Rokushiki. It was a taijutsu that brings out the unlimited potential of the human body. The taijutsu caught the attention of Might Guy, the greatest taijutsu sensei that Konoha has. When Might Guy first confronted Naruto, Naruto challenged him to an all-out fight. At first, Guy said no as he didn't want to hurt the kid, but as soon as he said that, Naruto went on a two-hour rant about the flames of youth. At the end of the rant, Guy was crying waterfalls of tears and accepted. So many people who saw and heard all that sweat dropped at that little, but interaction. Both Guy and Naruto went to a random training and begun their fight. Thirty minutes later, we see Guy on the ground, his clothes torn up, he was battered and bruised, while Naruto was standing above with a look of boredom. There were some dirt on him, but he dusted it off and disappeared to his penthouse. Little did he know, that their fight caught the attention of many civilians and ninjas. It was something that they could not forget. Uruka shook his head as he remembered that he had to walk into class. Once he walked into class, he saw that almost every student was excitedly chatting with one another. Seeing the uncontained energy and excitement of his students, Uruka could only smile at them, until they were ignoring the fact that the bell had rung. All right everyone, sit down and quiet. Implementing his village-renowned Kyoto no Jutsu, his students immediately quieted down and finally focused their attention to him. Good, now that I have your attention I'll be naming the squads that the Hokage has assigned you to. Where's Mizuki Sensei? One of the civilian students asked. That is confidential information, so I don't know. But in actuality, knew what happened. The day Mizuki took the Forbidden Scroll, was also the day that caused his life to end. He remembers how now Naruto suddenly appeared in a flash of light. How Naruto grabbed his throat and turned him into a mummified man. Haruka could say nothing for what he just saw. Someone dying like that made him throw up. He's seen some kills before, but that was sick. Not wanting to remember what happened next, Uruka began the team placements. Starting with the students with limited skill sets, the squad list slowly approached the rounded genin. Team 7 will consist of Menma, Mito, and Narumi Uzumaki Namikaze. Your sensei Kakashi Hitaki, at that moment, many groans and complaints rang out about the newly dubbed, strongest team, Team Hokage's kids. Most were about the loss of their crush to be on their team. Though the genin involved only let their heads pound the desk the unfortunate luck of having to stick with and deal with their siblings even when out on missions, and of having to deal with their perverted and habitually late older brother figure. While Naruto huffed in boredom as he didn't want the lapdog to be his sensei. After quieting down the class once more, Uruka continued. Team 8 will consist of Hanada Hayuga, Kiba Inazuka, and Shino Aburame. Your sensei, Kurinai Yuhi. Team 9 is still active. Team 10 will consist of Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara, and Choji Akamichi. Your sensei, Asuma Serutobi. At that, Ino practically broke the desk she was at when her head slammed onto it. Crying about how she was put on the worst possible team, while behind her Shikamaru muttered a quiet, Mendokuse. His eye twitching slightly at the rude behavior of his student, Uruka could only sigh before continuing. Team 11 will consist of Sasuke Uchiha, Sakura Haruno, and Sai. Your sensei, Genma Shiranui. Though, he was once again interrupted when Sakura rose out of her seat and flashed a victory sign at Ino claiming that the power of love prevails over all obstacles, as Sasuke let his head drop. For the final time, Uruka could only drop his head at his student's behavior before calling out the final team. The final team will be Team 12, which will consist of Yakumo Kurama, Satsuki Uchiha, and Naruto Paraya. Your sensei, Enko Midarashi. At that, the class went deathly quiet and some slowly turned their eyes towards the back where their most distant classmates sat Naruto looked at the two girls and looked away. Of course, the lull was broken when Uruka announced that their senseis would be coming to pick them up soon. As soon as that statement left his mouth, 
Kurinai arrived to pick up her team. Following her were Asuma and Genma. Left in the room were Team 7 and 12, Team 7 already knowing that they had a long wait ahead of them. After half an hour, the window flew open, followed by a kanai attached to a banner that read, The Great and Why Anko Midarashi has arrived. As a smoke bomb went off, out of the smoke emerged Anko wearing her signature grin and glint in her eyes. So you're Anko Midarashi? Of course I am, HMPH. I wouldn't expect too much from you. Naruto looked outside the window. Anko was looking intently at him, analyzing his mind see what she learned about him. Naruto knew what she was doing, and decided to put up thousands of mental barriers to keep her out. Well, which of you brats belong to me? If you're a part of my team, then we're meeting at training ground 12 in 15 minutes. Don't be late or I'll hunt you down, on second thought please be late, it'll make things more fun for me, ya nay. After saying her part, she jumped out the window but kept a keen eye on Naruto. After processing what just happened, Naruto let out a sigh as he stood up and walked out the door towards the training ground. Seeing their teammate leave, Satsuki and Yakumo followed him out the door leaving Team 7 behind. Scene change. Training ground 12, arriving with 3 minutes left to spare, Satsuki and Yakumo stood awkwardly as they waited for their sensei to arrive. While Naruto was looking directly at a tree. But they didn't have to wait long as a pouting Enko dropped from the tree that Naruto was looking at. You brats are no fun at all, it would have been more interesting and fun if I had to find and drag you here. But oh well, why don't we get to know each other? Enko happily said, but instead of a quick response she got blank stares while Naruto just rolled his eyes. He even rolled his third eye even though he covered it with his headband. But that was quickly broken when Yakumo raised her hand to ask a question. Um, Enko-sensei, could you begin? I don't think that we know the proper way to introduce ourselves. Yakumo asked, unsure on how to break the ice with her new team. But her concerns were eliminated as her sensei gave a grin and started things off. Well, I'm Enko Midarashi as you all know. My likes are snakes, Orochimaru sensei, my best friend Kurinai, Dango, poison, sharp things, and reading. My hate perverts, rapists, people who act like they're superior to others, bad Dango, and a boring book. My hobbies are working at the T&I division and hanging out with my friends. And my goal is to one day surpass Orochimaru sensei as his apprentice. Now that I'm done, why don't you go next since you asked, after her introduction, Anko turned towards Yakumo and decided that she was the next one to introduce herself. I'm Yakumo Kurama, nice to meet all of you. My likes are reading, training with my tutor Kurinai sensei, reading, mochi and being with my family. I also hate perverts, rapists, people who mock others for stupid reasons or reasons outside of their control, and people who look down on genjutsu users. My hobbies are cooking, gardening, flower arranging and training. My goal is to repay Minato and Kashina-sama for sealing off the Edo and giving me back my life, and to surpass Kurinai sensei as a genjutsu master. Yakumo stated with a small fire burning in her eyes towards the end. After her introduction, Anko pointed towards the scowling Satsuki. Nice to meet you Yakumo-chan. So you're the one that Nai-chan always talks about huh? Why don't you go next Miss Sunshine? As Yakumo blushed slightly, Satsuki growled at Anko and received a grin in return. I'm Satsuki Uchiha. My likes are training, reading, cooking and gardening. I hate our perverts, rapists, weaklings, useless people, and people who break their promises. My hobbies are pretty much the same as my likes. And my goal is to surpass my brother Itachi as a ninja and my mother as a woman. Satsuki said in her usual snarky tone though it turned surprisingly bashful when she mentioned surpassing her mother as a woman. Smirking at her, Anko finally pointed to the only male member of the squad and gestured him to begin. Alright. Well the ladies are done so why don't you introduce yourself, kid? Half expecting a twitching of the eyebrows or a glare. Anko was a little surprised when all she received was a scoff from Naruto. My name is Naruto Paraya. I like two people. I hate everyone in Konoha, including you three. My hobby is showing people that I am Kami. My goal and my dreams are one and the same. I will destroy Konoha and the Uzumaki Namikaze as they, this village, and everyone here is a stepping stone to greatness. Introducing himself in his usual high and mighty attitude, Naruto finished his introduction. Though, his goal caused quite a stir within his squad, 
all of them knew that he hated something but to speak of something that big without a care in the world showed he was serious. Well, now that most of us have introduced ourselves, she shot Naruto a critical look. You're still not truly genin of the leaf yet. You all still have one more test that you need to get through before you're field ready. So, tomorrow, meet back here at 10 a.m. sharp and don't eat any breakfast. I promise you that you'll just see it again within the hour. With that, Anko disappeared in a swirl of leaves using the Shunshin no Jutsu. After their sensei left, Satsuki and Yakumo gave each other a glance. They weren't on the best terms but weren't on the worst either. Most of this stemmed from Satsuki and Mito's rivalry, Yakumo somehow getting caught in the middle. However, they were on a team now so it was in their best interest to get along, at least that was Yakumo's train of thought. Satsuki, I know that we're not best friends or friends at all. So why don't we start now since we're on a team now? Yakumo asked, hoping that she'd accept her offer of friendship. Satsuki really wanted to just leave and go home to train or cook or do something other than getting along with Avmito's friends, but she knew that she'd get an earful from her parents and older brother if she didn't at least try to get to know her, so she just sighed and accepted. Sure, whatever. Just don't try and be all chummy with me, we're not friends just teammates. And don't tell Mito either. I'd rather not hear her complain about how I'm stealing her best friend. Nodding to Satsuki, they two began to head towards the center of the village, but before they left the training ground, they froze. Remembering that they had one more teammate, they turned around to see that he was already walking away reading a scroll. Looking at each other, they didn't know what they should do, though they settled on trying to invite him, considering how that was the most that they've heard him talk so they assumed that it would be alright to ask. Naruto, do you want to come get dinner with us? We might as well considering we're all on a team now, so we should try to get along. Yakumo asked as they managed to catch up to the multicolored hair kid. However, she was met with silence as he was too engrossed in his scroll to notice her and Satsuki. While Yakumo was a little amused, having had moments where she also tuned out the world when reading, Satsuki didn't take being ignored too kindly. Growling while she stomped towards him, she grabbed his shoulder and forced him to stop. Naruto just completely ignored her without a care in the world. Are you deaf? We've been trying to get your attention for the past minute? Geez. Why did I have to be paired with someone like you? At least pair me up with someone from the Uzumaki Namikaze family. Menma would have been better, I'd even settle for Mito. As Satsuki went on a tangent, Naruto could only stare at her with an annoyed expression, as Yakumo sighed beside her. Having had enough of her rambling, Naruto kiss her on the cheek. The reaction was almost instantaneous as she snapped out of her rambling immediately. Wah what are you doing you idiot? Just don't kiss me whenever you feel like it you pervert. Satsuki shouted, her cheeks tinged red with embarrassment and anger. It was then that Yakumo decided to step in before things got even more complicated than they already were. Naruto, Satsuki and I wanted to know if you wanted to get dinner together to celebrate our new status as a team and to get to know each other better. So will you come with us? Yakumo asked politely, hoping that he'd accept their offer. They got their answer when the scroll he was reading disappeared in a puff of smoke and he stared at them with his ever blank eyes. Sure, why not? I might as well get to know the two. Who knows, I might start dating you too. After that, a confident faced Naruto, a wryly laughing Yakumo, and a scowling pink faced Satsuki enter a popular barbecue restaurant to get to know each other better. For the better portion of the night, there were laughs heard from the booth as the three or rather Yakumo and Satsuki exchanged stories from their past while Naruto chose to remain silent as he didn't have many fond memories that he was willing to share, though he did share a story about an incident he was involved in that included a corrupt merchant, bees, honey, ants, paint, a bikini, and cameraman. He didn't expect the normally brooding and scowling Satsuki to burst out laughing and snorting as tears began to fall from her eyes or the reserved and polite Yakumo to laugh so much that she started crying with her sides hurting. The night ended with the three parting ways, Yakumo and Satsuki in better moods and a small smile gracing their faces. In the end, stepping stones are stepping stones, Naruto teleported back to his penthouse. Time skip. Morning and scene change, training ground 12. As the morning sun laid lazily overhead, Satsuki and Yakumo were sitting under the large sakura tree that laid in the center of the training ground. Satsuki had her scowl on her face though she was sneaking side glances at the only male member of their squad. Yakumo was reading a book, and like Satsuki, 
she was sneaking glances at Naruto before focusing back to her book and repeating the process. Naruto was standing away from them as he kept looking into the sky. Eventually, the lull of the moment was broken as their sensei made her explosive entrance, literally, as a smoke bomb exploded with her jumping out of it, her signature grin on her face. Well looks like you're all ready for the test I assume. Seeing the scowl, small frown, and hearing a scoff, Anko couldn't help but sweat drop slightly at the less than expressive faces of her students. Well then, why don't we begin? The test we'll be having is the good old fashioned bell test. All you have to do is take a bell from me and you pass. Simple right? Anko said happily, pulling out two silver bells out of her pocket. As soon as they saw the bells, Yakumo voiced the concern that all genin who received the test had. Anko sensei, but they are three of us. Why are there only two bells? As soon as the words left her mouth, Anko revealed a devious smirk before saying something that instantly set her genin off. Because, the one who doesn't manage to get a bell from me is going to go back to the academy and repeat the whole thing over again. Anko chirped happily, relishing in the tense and stressed expressions on her genin's faces. Though, she did notice that the only male of the squad had his blank stare still in place. All right then, let the test begin. As soon as she said that, the two female members rushed into the woods leaving her and Naruto behind. Raising an eyebrow, she gave Naruto a confused look. Um. You know that you're supposed to hide and plan right. However, instead of a reply, Naruto fell asleep while standing. Anko could only gawk at the audacity of the kid. Not only did he not answer her, which alone would have involved her using sharp things to make him answer her, he ignored the fact that he had a test going on. Is he really this confident, or just plain stupid? But she was broken from her thoughts as a volley of shuriken forced her to jump back to avoid being hit. Satsuki was angry, she was angry and tense, most of which came from the stupid test that her sensei had given them. Not only would one of them fail, they'd have to go through the whole academy again and that was something she wouldn't be taking a part of. After she had hidden in a few meters back, she saw her idiot of a teammate just fell asleep. She knew that he was the best in the academy, but that didn't mean that he should fall asleep. Not that she cared if he passed anything like that, but then she noticed that his hands were clenched. After closing the distance between, she started the bout with her sensei off with taijutsu. Enko grinned, seeing that things were finally about to get interesting. Satsuki quickly fell into the rhythm of her clan's kenken. The key component of the Uchiha clan's taijutsu relied heavily on using one's sharingan to predict the moves of the opponent and respond with quick yet powerful blows hence the name. However, Satsuki not having her sharingan yet, couldn't utilize it to its full extent. Quickly throwing a flurry of jabs and kicks, Satsuki quickly grew frustrated as Anko avoided each of her attacks like they were nothing. Throwing another hook towards Anko's midsection, Satsuki had her wrist grab pulled, knocking her off balance. Responding by twisting her body, she tried to deliver an axe kick but hit air as Anko backed away. Well I'll admit Gaki, you're not too shabby at your taijutsu, for a genin at least. Anko's taunt seemed to have the intended effect as she saw her student's face flush red. Growling, Satsuki rushed in again and threw another punch that was deflected, quickly spinning around she a backhand at Anko that she avoided by crouching and sweeping Satsuki off her feet. Regaining her balance, Satsuki quickly went through a series of hand seals that made Anko's eyes go wide. Finishing the last of the seals, Satsuki glared at Anko before taking in a deep breath. Kaden. Gukaku no Jutsu. Firing off a quick basketball sized ball of fire that hit Anko and sent her flying back before she was replaced with a gouged out log. Whoa, that's one dangerous Jutsu Gagi. I'd be torn up for sure if I got hit by that. You need to be more careful dropping out of a tree. Anko praised and scolded Satsuki but before she finished a rain of kunai forced her to perform another kawarimi. Jumping out of the brush, Yakumo had a kunai in a reverse grip as she headed towards Satsuki who wasn't happy to see her. What are you doing here? I don't need your help to get a bell. You saw that I almost had her right there. Satsuki was really frustrated, being toyed with by her playful sensei didn't sit well with her at all. Satsuki, I know that you're frustrated, but please listen to me, though her teammate was irritable, Yakumo knew she had to get her to calm down or else they'd all fail. Seeing the angry but now focused face of her teammate, Yakumo began her assessment of the current situation at hand. We know that we need to get those bells right, from what we talked about last night, 
we know that Naruto helps us. Going by his performance in the academy, it's probably the best to leave him out, that being said, I think we'll be able to get those bells with just the two of us. I don't like leaving him behind, I really don't, but we need to pass. I think well this will work, so here's the plan. Making a guilty face, Yakumo shot a glance towards their still sleeping teammate before relaying the plan she had devised to Satsuki. To say that she was surprised was an understatement, Satsuki had always thought that Yakumo was someone who was all about being friends with everyone but seeing her leave Naruto out didn't sit well with Satsuki for some reason, but she needed to pass so she agreed to the plan that she created, which was crafty in her opinion. Seeing that her two students were finished with their group huddle, Anko walked out of the brush with her grin still in place. Are the two of you time with your little team meeting? Come on, let's get things going again. Satsuki and Yakumo flashed through the hand seals for their respective jutsu, with Satsuki rushing in while Yakumo stayed back. Interesting, Satsuki is coming in to apply pressure while Yakumo is most likely setting up a genjutsu to throw me off. Not shabby for a couple of rookies. Thought Anko as she avoided another gukaku no jutsu from Satsuki before she heard Yakumo. Kanashibari no jutsu, Yakumo called out, as Anko felt a slight stiffening in her body as the genjutsu took effect. As Satsuki closed the distance once again, diving low for the bells that were tied to her waist. As she felt the cool touch of the metal, Satsuki couldn't help but smile as the plan that Yakumo made worked. But as quick as the feeling of success came, it left as Anko grabbed her wrist and locked it behind her back, making Satsuki yelp in pain as she was forced onto the ground. Yakumo's reaction was the same as Satsuki's, elated that her plan had worked, but her hopes were crushed as their sensei had broken out of her genjutsu and subdued Satsuki without any problems. Grinning from ear to ear, Anko couldn't help but be impressed by the show of teamwork of the two girls. That was some good teamwork girls. Having one of you keep the pressure on me while the other immobilizes me, that was some plan, but then again, it wasn't good enough. As she finished her statement, noticed that the last member of the squad had disappeared, she wasn't the only one as Yakumo and Satsuki had noticed as well. Huh, where did the kid go? Did he go home or something? Anko asked, seeing the confused expressions on her students, she figured that they had no idea either. But as she was about to get off Satsuki and go find him. Rankiaku. Gaichu. She immediately jumped back to avoid a bird-like blade of wind that was going to the head that cut off a few hairs on her head. Anko was shocked, her eyes wide, she didn't notice him until the last second. If she had been any slower there's no doubt that she'd be hurting or even unconscious. Soru, after his kick missed, Naruto quickly grabbed Satsuki in a princess carry, ignoring her shouts to let her go, and jumped back to where Yakumo was. Putting the now scarlet Satsuki, he turned back to Anko and rushed her. Fast! was the unanimous thought of the group as Naruto stopped in front of Anko and proceeded to take her on with his taijutsu. Jugon. Anko quickly blocks the full fist strike, but Naruto continued to use Jugon. Damn, he hits Ing hard. And on top of that he's fast, this is getting bad my arms are starting to go numb. Anko grunted feeling the heavy blows of her student as she blocked and parried his attacks, though she was caught off guard as a kick broke through her guard and sent her stumbling back spittle flying out of her mouth from the heavy blow. Though his assault didn't stop there, as he charged in and slipped in behind her. Satsuki and Yakumo could only let their mouths hang open as they saw the scene unfolding in front of them. The dead last of their class was holding his own against a janin, and the apprentice of Orochimaru no less. Anko was starting to get pissed, she had underestimated this brat and he was actually starting to push her back, her. The apprentice of one of the sanin, Catching her balance, she turned around with a kick. Tekai. Naruto stood perfectly still as he let the attack connect, but felt absolutely nothing. Following up, she threw a heavy punch but hand no effect. Not letting him go so easily, she tried to tackle him to the ground. Naruto extended his right index finger. Oren? Naruto jabbed her multiple times in the stomach, causing her spit out blood. That ing hurt Gaki, what the hell are you? Enko questioned him. Behind the two, Satsuki's face was now in shock at the scene of her sensei beaten like she was nothing. Next to her was Yakumo who couldn't believe her own eyes, her shocked expression matched Satsuki's. But their thought were broken as they heard a ringing. The ringing came from Naruto. Naruto held the two bells in the air, 
Both his team matches and his sensei looked at him in shock. I took the bells from you the moment you said start. Naruto informed them, which shocked them even more. Then why didn't you say anything? Now you know the might of Kami. Well then, all I have say is. Congrats brats. You all pass. As she congratulated them, she was asked the question at hand by Satsuki. But Anko sensei, we haven't decided on who would get the bells yet. Satsuki questioned, knowing that Naruto would probably keep them for himself. She would definitely fight for the bells. I need to have that second bell, Naruto is going to have to give me that. Sorry Naruto, it's not because I want to be on a team with you or anything, I just don't want to go through the academy again. Yeah, that's right. Re g g g g g g h h h t t. While Satsuki was having an internal debate as to her intentions of wanting the bells, Yakumo was having a similar one. Naruto is definitely keeping the bell for himself. I would really like to get one of them. It would be nice being on a team with someone as reliable as him if he's as skilled as what I saw. But that's not saying Satsuki isn't reliable either. However, their inner thoughts were broken by Anko who revealed the true reason behind the test. That's true, but the real reason for this test was to test your ability to work as a team. At first, you all were going to fail. But with that little stunt you three did, I can see that you all have a future as a pretty powerful squad if we can work out the kinks. So yeah, Team 12 is official. As the words left her mouth, Satsuki and Yakumo revealed a dazzling smile while as Anko gave them all a grin. As they turned to the only male member of their team, to their complete shock and awe, he had a small sincere on his face though it vanished quickly into a confident smile. Satsuki and Yakumo quickly turned their heads away. Sheik's flushed while Anko revealed a predatory grin. Scene change. Hokage's tower. A few hours after the final genin exams were concluded, Minato as well as the janin who proctored the exams were discussing the results of the tests. Well, how did the genin perform on their tests everyone? Getting mixed responses from the janin, Minato decided to call them in order of team number to give their reports. Most of them were able to pass, but a few failed due to conflicts within the team which caused them to fail in working as a team. Team 7 passes Minato sensei, but that's to be expected as they're all siblings and know each other pretty well. Kakashi gave his report, happy that his team passed. Getting a smile and nod from Minato, he continued with the reports. Team 8 passes as well Minato-sama, though Kiba Inazuka is trying to assert himself as the alpha of the team. I'll have to work on getting him out of a pack mindset. Kurenai reported, confident that her team will become a strong one in the future. Minato also was pleased, he knew how the Inazuka clan operated on a similar level to how a pack of wolves operated, so Kiba was only doing what his clan did. Team 10 also passes Minato-sama, though the new Ino Shika Cho seems out of balance. Shikamaru and Choji get along great, but Ino isn't trying at all to get to know them or work with them at all. Shikamaru needed to appeal to her pride in order to get her to work with them, hopefully she breaks out of it. Asuma reported, concerned about the future of his team due to the blonde. Minato could only laugh wryly, knowing how Inoichi's daughter was absolutely obsessed with his son Menma. Hopefully, she'd get into the Kunoichi mindset soon, though. Team 11 has passed as well Minato-sama, however, they are not exactly team material. Sasuke Uchiha shows no aptitude for teamwork, opting to work alone. Adding on to that, he doesn't try to associate with his teammates at all, even when they were struggling to pass my test. Sakura Haruno is the exact opposite to Sasuke, all she is trying to do it to get him to agree to go on a date with her. While this wouldn't be normally a problem, she seems obsessed with him, to the point where Sai badmouthed him, she slugged him across the face. That brings me to Sai, he's different. I don't know, but I get the feeling that he isn't a genin, he's far too perceptive to be. After about half an hour, he got his teammates together and immediately told them about how teamwork was the key to the test. I won't do anything now, but I'll keep you updated about him. Genma reported with a sigh, knowing that he'd have his work cut out for him in the future. Minato gave a sharp nod in response, Orochimaru also commented on this team saying that they would either sink or swim, the team dynamic being somewhat similar to his own. But he did warn Minato to pay attention to Sai, as he had his suspicions about him as well. Team 12 also passed Hokage-sama. They were pretty good for a couple of rookies. Satsuki and Yakumo managed to bind me for a few seconds with their teamwork. 
but most the most surprising thing was Naruto. At that statement, everyone's attention was focused on Anko, Minato's eyes widened by her statement and asked if she could continue, which she did. While it was just taijutsu, that kid is dangerous. And I mean dangerous. I'd estimate that in terms of pure speed, strength, and power, he's at least low Jonin, but I can tell he's holding back more than we think. But that's not all, he hits pretty flippin' hard too. Lifting the sleeves of her trench coat, Anko showed the dark colored bruises that spotted her arm. These were all from him, I'm not joking when I say he actually pushed me to start trying. The first move he made was a kick that made a blade of wind that to my head and I'm sure if I didn't dodge it, I'd be dead for sure. At the end of her report, everyone in the room quieted. They knew that Naruto was good, but he had a god complex that was bigger than anything. So they thought that someone might knock that out of him. But he actually managed to actually make the normally playful Anko try that sent a shock through their systems as well as curiosity as to what else he could have been hiding. Minato knew that he had to get to the bottom of that mystery when he finds Naruto. Thank you, everyone. For the genin who didn't pass, please notify them that they will be put on reserve until they are placed on a team that works for them alright? That's all I have, thank all of you for your reports and meet me tomorrow for your squad's first mission. Anko, could you stay behind, please? I need to talk to you. With that, he dismissed the Jonin with the exception of Anko. What's up Hokage-sama? Anko asked though she knew what he was probably going to ask about. It's not every day that you hear people say they managed to single-handedly take on a Jonin, even if they weren't going at 100%. I'm sure you already know, but it's about Naruto. I wanted to know since I know that Orochimaru asked you to monitor him for me, what do you think his mental state is? Do you think he's a threat to the village? Please be honest with me. Minato asked in a slightly hesitant manner before he believed that his son wasn't a threat to the village but after hearing how he managed to go toe to toe with one of the top ninjas in his village, he needed to be sure. Not just as a father but as the Hokage. As of right now, he's a real threat that needs to be watched. From what I've gathered, he hates Konoha and everyone her. He considers everyone a stepping stone for his. He even admitted that he will destroy Konoha. Judging from his body language when he interacts with other people, he doesn't really pay attention to them since he thinks he's the superior being. I'll keep an eye out for him, though. Anko reported, knowing that it meant a great deal to him. Receiving a smile and a thank you, in return, she was dismissed. Leaning back in his chair, Minato could only clutch his head in sadness. Just how bad did he screw up to make his oldest child like this? Every since Naruto was born, he vowed to protect him. Now, what could he do? The end. Now we will see you in the next video.